Hi, my name is James Riley from the Wisconsin Historical Fencing Association. And I'm Nancy Grillo. Today we're going to discuss the art of Lee Sonora's longsword. We're going to discuss basic concepts of this art. And we're going to begin our discussion uh, exploring the concept of Lee Sonora's parry. Lee Sonora's parry is probably the most elusive part of his system. Uh, depending on how you read the source material, you could even get a sense that Lee Sonora, Lee Sonora tells you not to parry at all. Right? Instead, he tells you to counterattack uh, and displace your opponent's attack in a single time action. Uh, we find this claim rather dubious. There, uh, the, and also, depending on how you read it, you can see that Lee Sonauer, uh has uh, distinct moments where he's displacing his uh, opponent's sword and not responding with an offensive action until after that displacement has been achieved. So if we want to assume that Lee Sonauer does want us to parry, uh, then what we really need to try and discover is exactly how. Now, depending on how you read the source material, you might get a sense that Lee Sonora wants you to parry in such a way that keeps your point in line with the opponent. So as my opponent strikes in at me, I want to begin my parry by putting my point in my opponent's face. Now, theoretically that makes sense, but unfortunately, when you put it into practice, it falls apart. Because if I keep my point in line with my opponent's face as he strikes in, right, he has a mechanical advantage because he's now pushing my sword away from my skeletal structure. If my sword is in my opponent's face and I'm displacing his blade at the same time, then the force of his action is going to pull my sword away from me rather than absorb it in through my body. So I'm not going to want to keep my point in line with my opponent as I parry. And that doesn't matter if I do that by going along the point, or if I do that by coming to flu. I'm always going to have my sword in line with my skeleton structure as I absorb the force of his attack. Another thing that we see is this idea of striking down onto our opponent's sword. We see this in the Zornhaus section, when Lee Sonora says it's nothing more, the Zornhaus is nothing more than a peasant blow. And so some get a sense that what we're trying to achieve in this is striking down on our opponent's blade to force his cut out. As he strikes in on me, I strike down on his blade, displacing it and freeing me up for this action. The problem with that is, as I begin my parry, my opponent's already perceiving what's happening. And in that moment, my opponent can take that opportunity to, let's say, pull his strike. Against my, against my incoming blow to his sword. And if I've committed myself to striking down onto his sword, then what's going to happen is his, his secondary attack, his second intention attack, uh, the pulling, is going to strike before, I have, uh, before I'm able to stop the force of my parry and redirect it <clears throat> into the new incoming line. He strikes in, I strike down on his sword, and he's already completed his offensive action before I can get my point back over. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to stop the force of our opponent's offensive action by pointing over his sword. Not by cutting down onto it, not by pointing at our opponent, but rather we're going to point down the angle of his cut in such a way that we absorb the force of his strike onto our cross. He strikes in at us, and here I've absorbed the force of his attack, and I've done so in such a way that I'm not committed to striking down onto his sword. All I'm doing is extend my arm, like a stiff arm block. All right? What I achieve by doing this not only is nullifying the force of his attack, but I'm also planning to redirect my structure towards the new incoming attack. And so if my opponent strikes in 
at me from above, perceives my parry, and strikes, uh, uh, does a pulling to strike to the other opening, I can redirect my structure to defend against it. Because I haven't struck down under the sword, I haven't committed myself to defeating that one attack, I'm able to defeat many. And I can do this in response to a Dirk Spexen as well. My opponent strikes, I carry, he Dirk Spexen, I can just reorient the structure of my body to absorb the force of his attack. Once I've done that, I can bring my point online and threaten a thrust. Now I'm going to do this in response to many attacks, and I'm going to wait for my opponent to stop attacking until I begin my repose. And so if he strikes three attacks, four attacks, I'm going to defend all of them just by reorienting my structure towards the direction of those attacks. If he, if he combines Zuckens with uh, Dershrexens uh, Der and Obanagenenen, Whatever the case may be, I'm able to respond just by reorienting my structure, pointing over my opponent's attack, keeping my, my point directed towards my opponent, so as he completes his offensive series of actions, all I need to do is turn my point in and extend a thrust, re retaking the board. One last thing, finally, is that you notice I withdraw as my opponent sets off a flurry of offensive actions, I'm going to continue to move back. And what I'm doing here is I'm keeping my point at a distance where it can remain a threat to my opponent. If my opponent strikes in at me at this distance, I can parry this attack, I can even parry it in a strong way. But from here, it's too late to get my point into my opponent. And so instead what I want to do is I want to channel the force of his cut so that his weak is absorbed onto my cross. And if my opponent's stepping in, then the only way that I can achieve that is by stepping back. So again, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to organize my parry so that the force of his attack is channeled in through my skeleton, down into the ground. I'm using my sword as a shield to stiff arm his attack. And as he changes lines, I'm just going to gravitate towards his new line of attack. I'm going to gravitate, uh, gravitate towards the new angle that he's attacking from. The best way that I can kind of think about explaining this is that my long edge is a magnet. And so no matter where my opponent's sword is, my long edge is going to follow him. My point is going to remain oriented towards my opponent, but over the angle of the attack that he's making. So if he attacks nice and slow, if he changes the attack, my long end is a, a magnet, follows round and round. If he just dirt tracks him, it's nice and easy, right? He dirt tracks him. He can dirt tracks him again. My long end screens. And as he dirt tracks him, it's nice and easy. One, two, three. Right? I always just keep my long edge oriented towards him. 